All right, welcome back to Zimdog, and we are on our second trip to Bear. Bear Lake in search of the mighty carp with our not-so-mighty gear. I have made some changes, so let's see if, um, if it makes a difference. I think we will start off at 4450 once again. It's where we started last time, and then we ended up ending at another spot down on the other side of the lake but here we are at 4450 and we're going to once again use our fake carp ground bait which has feed corn maggots peas and a vanilla attractant so let's um get that back out and go to clip 23 uh just a nice reliable spot on bear that hopefully will perform for us. Let me get both these lines out and then I will show you the changes that I've made from our last adventure. If you, um, if you didn't see part one of our bear adventures, really we should say carp adventures because I think we'll end up at uh, Old Berg some as well. But if you didn't see part one, we uh, unfortunately got spooled once, but fortunately landed a really nice black carp. So we want to kind of see how these will do now that we've made some changes, trying to avoid getting spooled as much as possible. So what I've done is instead of having the uh, 16 kilo line, we've moved back down to a 15 kilo line, but we've switched it from mono to braid. So we've lost some power. Uh, but we've gained some more line on our spool because we're just trying to survive some of these carp and wear them out, right? We're still using an inline rig with potatoes and a 14 and a half kilo leader so that when something pops, it will be our leader and uh, not the whole daggum rig. All right, that definitely has a fish on. So these two lines are currently really set up identically. Um, we may test with those boilies again. I, I'm, I'm not opposed to doing that. Um, but I first just wanted to get a measure of this spot. See what the bite rate's going to be like. See what type of carp we're pulling out. And, um, and the other thing we're going to do, we also made changes to this rig. If you'll remember, we had... Um, we had line that was exactly ma matching up with the Adriatica. Well, now we've over overloaded it to 10 and a half. So not too much, but a little bit, but we've backed it back down to 9.7 with our leader. And I think we want to go with uh, maybe a fake barbel mix. Let's go, let's start with a size. Ooh, I always go back and forth because we're thinking about tench and barbel here, right? Let's start with an eight hook. We'll go with our cheaper eight hook and put some cheese on. Let's just see if anything is in the water and we'll keep the same clip uh we're gonna go a little more centralized on this cast you know the other spot here is this but i wasn't catching as much on there let's let's try it here for now and we can move it move around spots if it seems to get too slow this is a pretty uh hot time of day to catch some fish so hopefully before it gets too late into the evening we'll get a fish or two on and, uh, and then we'll go from there. So we'll see. Like, I, you know, I'm interested to see what a six kilo grass carp feels like to do some comparisons to what we had last time and uh, maybe some other fish as well. And by the way, we could get totally blown up in this line. There's no question. But if we do, that's okay. We don't have as much invested in this line. What I really don't want to lose is our expensive carp hooks and all that on the first two lines that we've got. All right, we may just have to like let this fish chill a little bit. So far it's not pulling too aggressively. Hopefully we can fatigue it out a little bit. I'd say this might not be a carp at all. Our hope here is that we might land some barbel and even some tench. Uh, uh, it's not a barbel. 
It looks like a carp, doesn't it? Yeah, that's a carp. Huh. It's a decent little mirror we got in on that line. That's kind of cool. Well, let's throw it right back to the same spot and just see what happens. Probably worth switching to night crawlers at night. I don't think we're going to catch a bunch of barbel or tench once it gets to be overnight hours. But here in the early evening, we can keep it going with cheese a little bit longer. But with night crawlers, maybe we'll get an occasional burbot or something or bream. I mean, just something on that line to make a little bit of silver while we're waiting on the big carp to bite. Try not to take too many chances here. Is that a common? Now that's what we want. That's what we want, and that's what we didn't have last uh, adventure. Is some nice, small, common carp. Very appropriate size for our level. It's kind of it's ideal, to be honest. Won't cause too much damage on our gear. And if we can catch enough of them, the silver will add up too. So it's pretty decent. Good XP. You know, if we could target, I don't know, 3 to 10 kilo common carp, if like that's all we would catch, that's, uh, that's the perfect scenario for coming out here with Saber 60s and trying to survive. That second spot we tried was 59.62. And we could try that again, but my overall feeling is that Bear is probably not on fire right now, but 44.50 might be about as good as we can do at Bear right now. We'll see though. I'm thinking first thing in the morning, maybe we just experiment with switching back to boilies. We'll see. I don't know. Uh, the problem with boilies at this point is we don't really have the gear for it, right? Like with boilies and carp fishing, you're trying to more consistently target the bigger fish. Not that the monsters don't occasionally come in on potatoes. They do. But potatoes are going to be a little bit higher bite volume I feel like and a wider range of quality of fish especially since we only have two carp lines we probably ought to just stick with potatoes most of the time once it gets past midnight I'm going to switch cheese off to, to night crawlers not that we're really well this might not be a bad spot I, I don't know burbot could come out here we'll just do like aim a little bit more left still like 23 clip or so and uh, see if we can't find a burbot here or a bream or something. Is that a, uh, it's not even a marker, is it? I was hoping it was a crucian, actually. It's so small. Let's see if we can get that full cast this time. We're going 23 clip right now. It's kind of an old school clip. clip. So, I mean, I think recently folks have been maybe clipping a little shorter, closer to the, um, all the nasty you see right in front of us. And then I know yesterday some folks were fishing here in the spot and casting more over at those reeds, uh, which is just sort of a different spot entirely. That can also be a good spot, though. But back in the day, I mean, I, this is one of the spots that just gets fished a lot at bear. And uh, so the clips can change. This is also the spot where it used, I mean, what, maybe three, four weeks ago, Super hot casting just over those reeds there to your left, about 19 to 21 clip. It's really good. All right, so this is the situation that we put braid on for. 
<clears throat> we've got hopefully plenty of line on the spool no matter what this fish decides to do the downside of braid is I think braid might do a little faster damage to our reel at least that's what I've heard but Saber 60s are not that expensive to repair at least most of the components uh, or replace most not all the components but so I think we can continue to be a little bit aggressive here just a little fella guys really small little fella Bite rate's been okay there. So far, at least for bear, it's been pretty decent. All right, we're after midnight. cast it far enough there. I wonder if that's why we weren't catching a fish. We're going to total embrace the, uh, the burbot idea here, I think. out there and just see what happens. Hmm. We just hopefully will remember to change that by, you know, four or five in the morning. We want to set up again for really testing to see if there's any barbel or tench biting here right now. This is a good sign. If we can get a couple of carp through, carp through the overnight hours, that's a, that's a healthy sign for this place, this spot. It's a marker, I'll take it.
trying to figure out where I want to fish on Amber tonight on the main account. Those are night crawlers getting a bite. Now that is interesting. I think we have a fish on on the second line. I think that is fair to say. It is small though. But potatoes are showing us that there are carp in these waters. All right, so let's see, 57, 138 at Amber is the pond. And I was just having really good luck there yesterday when I briefly fished there. I may start there at Amber and we'll go from there. I don't know, we'll see. I think it's still the case now, right, that prices at Volkov are now the same as Mosquito and Winding. I think that's true. And Sura? I'm not sure about the later lakes. Those may be, maybe, I mean, I don't, I know that Cory seems to still be the most expensive place to purchase gear or stuff like that. And Old Berg is also a little more pricey, I believe. There we go. See, we've gotten a couple of fish through the overnight hours. That is a good sign. I think we'll see some bites first thing in the morning as well. We had the nibbles on the night crawlers, but it did not stay with us, did it? Let that carp just run for a second. And it wasn't pulling line. It was just swimming in a uh, away from us. And uh, instead of pulling aggressively against it, let's just let it swim for a minute and then we'll bring it in. This is a nice little carp here. Again, this is sort of ideal size for us on our gear. We're getting pretty decent experience, a little bit of silver, uh, and not fighting something for an hour. That is okay with me. And we also seem to have landed in a spot where we're not just getting grass carp after grass carp that there's a nice variety we've seen common and we've seen mirror as well as the one grass unfortunately we never caught that burbot but this is a good time to switch back to switch back to our cheese and just see what the morning brings 
on this one. Make sure it gets out there and doesn't get snagged again. Really interested to see what this is. There we go. Wow, this is going to be a big boon for this account. Over 8,000 XP. Goodness. So there are tents here. Even the golden variety. Now let's see if we get a barbel. Yeah, for a carp spot, this is so far seems like really good bite rate, good quality and diversity of fish. And there's something actually meaningful we can do with our third rod here. Alright, this is one of those fish that we want to see if we can just tire out a little bit. So the strength of this fish so outweighs the power of our rig. I mean, it's not even close. If it's going if it's pulling full strength, we're not really even slowing it down. Now, right now we've got it turned to us, but I think it'll fight back again before we can actually get it in.
this point in the fight, I'm willing to take a chance here and just try to overpower the fish. If we get it above water, it's going to be a lot harder for it to pull back against us. And uh, we should be able to get it right in here. It's close enough that we were able to do it. These grass carp have so much strength. That's just seven kilo grass carp. Any bigger than that, we're just waiting for it to get tired. We're just trying to survive. But we just have more more, more uh, margin, more uh, room for error, more margin with the braid line uh, and more, more line, more line on the spool. See what we have here. It's a carp. little grass come on we almost had him
may have to walk this one down a little bit just because I don't want to drag it across the land. It's hard to see where it is since it's running along the shore there. The other rod is also losing line. Maybe not quite as bad as this one. Ooh, it just started swimming right towards us. I thought it had popped off, but it just like took a turn right towards us. Well, we're at least closing the distance a little bit here. Looked at the right time here. Oh, nope, you're not swimming away this time. I don't know where it was going though. It took a turn towards the shore. That wasn't gonna work. Well, it's a pretty nice little grass carp. It's just amazing how much strength they have. if we can just power this one in and then we'll try to be patient on that carp mm, it's fighting Ooh, look at that rod that's not a good sign that's a common I like it I like it this fish has a little more power than I thought it did at first Ooh, I gotta be careful there. I'm trying to just close the distance a little bit. I mean, the problem is the bend in this part of the lake. It doesn't really work to our advantage. Look how much line we have on though. I mean, we can fight this fish for quite a while with our current spool size.
This is working so much better. This is like, you know, problem solving here. I mean, you know, we're still going to be in trouble if we were to land a 20 kilo carp, but, or if we were to hook into a 20 kilo carp, but we're dealing with these sort of small to mid-sized carps a lot better with this braided line because of the amount of line we have on. It's not, it's not forcing me to do as dangerous and aggressive as, a, as things as I was having to before with such a small spool. So we're going to be able to outlast a lot of these fish that we wouldn't otherwise. So definitely one of the fun parts of this game, I feel like, is trying to problem solve as you do move into carp fishing. And you're waiting on earning the silver to be able to afford the little bit stronger gear. You can do some problem solving to sort of ease your way into it. And, and honestly, this would be even safer and in some ways more ideal to use this type of gear on certain spots at Old Berg. Um, but I wanted to make sure that I had a, had a chance to come spend a little bit of time at Bear and just see what it would be like with this stuff. So you'll notice I didn't put the other two lines back in the water. I think after we either land this fish or don't land this fish, I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up. It's been a shorter video, but we've had some nice fishing and um, they don't all have to be tremendously long. So let's try to get this fish in right here. I suspect it's another grass carp, but yeah, most of our runners were grass carp. So yeah, that's another nice little eight, nine kilo grass carp. Um, let's go see how we did. Silver wise. And uh, where are we? It's this way. And I suspect next episode we'll probably be doing the same thing. Although I'll try to look around and do some checking. If there happens to be a nice carp spot at Old Berg, we could do a, a session at Old Berg as well. All right. So 119 silver in about 38 minutes of fishing. It's very nice. Um, let me go ahead and do this real quick. Uh, it's pretty cool. Uh, you know, that golden tench helps a lot. I mean, if we didn't catch that golden tench, then you're talking about more like 100 silver. I mean, I don't know what we're replacing it with, but... Um, but, you know, it's fun. Card fishing is just fun. It becomes a lot more lucrative when you can efficiently bring in the larger carp more quickly. Um, and obviously, once you unlock stronger gear as well as um, find spots where you can really use boilies to target the higher quality fish. And then eventually, going to amber, but even here at bear, being able to use PVA and some other tricks with carp fishing. It just becomes more and more lucrative, but I just think it's so fun even when, you know, even when the, the silver is probably not that different than some of the other farming spots that we've been hitting, you know, fishing for bream and other stuff. Um, it's a nice break from that stuff because you've probably been doing a lot of that getting up to this level. So the fact that we can do some carp fishing at this point, I think is pretty cool. Um, as always, thanks for watching. I really appreciate you all being here. Our, uh, our in-game chat community continues to grow. As the community gets larger, I've noticed that it is, you know, more and more different personalities, more some, some more clashing happening in chat, unfortunately. And I've tried to just remind everyone, let's just keep chat friendly, family friendly. Also, just remember, we want to treat others like, like we want to be treated. Uh, if you've got an issue with someone, uh, maybe just take a minute, catch your breath. And I think a lot of those conversations would be healthier just to move those into one-on-one -on -one conversations instead of um, going back and forth and letting things escalate in our in-game chat. Remember, a lot of folks are here just different ages, different backgrounds from different parts of the world. And uh, most folks are just here because they want to enjoy this community and enjoy uh, being able to relax a little bit after a busy day and have fun fishing. So let's help others be able to do that as well even in, as, as in the ways that we're treating each other. As always, thanks for watching, and uh, I look forward to seeing you next time. Peace out.